Hi, hi, welcome to Prophet Utterance. I'm your host, Jacqueline King. It's a pleasure to be back. I'm in to do a continuation of a teaching that I had done earlier in regards to um, being a waster, not being good with your finances, your resources, or whatever God has given you, uh, given to you and to me. We have to make sure we are good stewards. So this is part two of part one because part one had poor connection. So I just want to go over and do some more teaching uh, to, with the continuation of part one, okay? And, I, and the scripture that I want to use is uh, Luke 16, verse 1 and 2. And it says here, also, he also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a, a steward and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Amen. Give an account of your stewardship for you can no longer be a steward. And that's one of the things that we have to really understand that being a good steward is one that can show the benefits of what they are doing. It's like when you go to work, you get your paycheck, you want to set aside a certain amount of income in your savings or in your checkings account. You want to make sure you're a good steward to pay your bills or whatever responsibilities that you have out there. But if you and I are not good stewards, we are considered to be wasters. And the prayer point highlights well, a waster is one that is not qualified, but one that is disqualified, I mean, from having the wealth and the blessings of God. So today, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to counsel, counsel any spirit of wasting in your life, any decisions that you have made that has caused you to be a waster, caused you to be uh, poor with management, always mismanaging what people give to you or what you have of your own. You have to learn to manage the little that you have, because the little that you have, you will be better when you have a multiple increase. Some people feel like if they have more, they will manage more. But if you can't manage the little that you have, you will not be able to manage the more. Amen. The increase upon increase, the abundance, amen, the overflow. There's certain things in our lives that needs to be disciplined. God gives seed to the sower. Amen. And if you're not sowing, you're not going to receive the seed. And a lot of people wants the seed to eat and not to sow. God gives seed to the sower. God wants you to sow and he wants you to sow in healthy ground. He wants you to sow where you can reap, where you can harvest. Amen. And the thing is that the harvest is plenty in regards to soul salvation. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And there are a lot of laborers out here that are few. And we can see that in the physical where there's so much employment out there. The employment market is, is, is full. It's harvest time. But anyone can get a job if they really want to work because then we don't have enough laborers among us. And so God is calling you to be a laborer here in the kingdom of God. God wants you to you, you and I to be responsible with the little that we have. It, and when we do give, we don't give grudgingly and we don't give out of necessity. We give with a joyful heart, being led and prompted by the spirit of God to give because God knows your circumstances. He knows more about what's going to happen to you, to me before we know. So when we put seed in the ground, we are securing our deliverance. We are securing our breakthrough. We're securing whatever God wants to do for us or prevent in our lives. Amen. Now, does he need your money? No. What he wants to see is your faith. He wants to see our faith being activated. He wants to see that we are being promoted and not demoted. Because it's our father that sets one down and sets one up. Amen. He sets one up down, up, down. So he's the one that's going to elevate us. He's the one that's going to lift us up. He's the one that's going to bring us into a place of wholeness. He's the one that's going to bring us into a place of breakthrough, multiple breakthroughs, but you cannot get breakthroughs by yourself. You got to be in a corporate dwelling. You got to be in a place where you can begin to produce and bring forth harvest. And there will be plenty among us, amen, that will help us to reap the harvest. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
Come on, pray with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I reject being a waster. I reject being disqualified. Come on. I reject being a waster. I reject being disqualified. Father, forgive me of wasting my seed. Come on. Wasting my seed. Wasting my substances. Father, forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and deliver me from being disqualified because I don't want to be disqualified. Come on, speak to the father, begin to prophesy and tell him that you do not want to be disqualified. Let him know that you are qualified to reap the financial blessings that he has for you, for you, and for you. Amen. That he has for you and your household. You and I should not want to be disqualified. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, whoever watches this video, I pray they will be qualified, Father God. They will be qualified and not disqualified. They will be qualified for wealth and financial blessings. Father God, everyone who desires a financial success, must be faithful. And I pray, God, that he or she will be faithful with the little that they have. I pray, Father God, that they will break through in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will break through and be an overcomer in everything that God has for them. Because the word says we overcome him by the word of our testimony. We overcome him by the blood of the lamb, by our testimony, because we love not our lives unto death. So Father, we thank you, God, that every person here is being qualified to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed in all that you do. Be blessed in all that you think and what you conceive. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the word says here, Luke 16, verse 10 and 12. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in least is unjust in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in unrighteousness, if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteousness, mammon, who will commit to your trust? the true riches. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Amen. Go back and study that scripture. God, good stewardship brings blessing. Whatever you do, do it well. Because it always attracts favor from God. So even if you are being a good steward with your resources, you too will be a good steward over somebody else's substances. Amen? A lot of times, people are reckless with other people's substances. They're not a good steward with somebody else's finances and, or, or whatever, their business or whatever, okay? And they may believe, well, it's not mine. What does it matter? It does matter when you're a child of God. It does matter because God wants to see that you and I are being good stewards, not just in our personal affairs, but in every area of our life outside of that, where we are helping others, where we are teaching people, where we are showing people that we can, they, we can do good and they can trust us. Amen. Can you be trusted? Can you be trusted with the little? Can you be trusted? Because the word is saying here, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. So if you're faithful with the little, you're going to be faithful with the much. Amen. And then he says, he that is unjust in the least is unjust in much. So if you're being unjust with little, then it's going to continue on with much. Amen. Because this is a behavior problem. This is a cognitive behavior problem. There's something wrong with that individual's thinking when he or she thinks that they could be, they will be more faithful if they have much. No, 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 no. If you're not faithful with the little, you're not going to be faithful with much. If you're unjust with the little, you're going to be unjust with the much. Amen. This is what the word is saying. God is teaching you and I how to be faithful with the little. God wants you and I to grow and mature. God wants us to be rooted and firm, firm foundation so we can bring forth our fruit. 
And our leaves will not, our, our leaves will not wither, but we will bring forth our fruit in its season. But when we bring forth our fruits out of season, then the fruit is no good because it's not growing in its time, in its season. Because we're not being faithful to what God is saying to do in our lives and other people's lives. Amen. And then it goes on to say, if therefore you have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon. And you know mammon is something what person is always, uh, they, they worship the, the finances, the money. There's so much connected to the spirit of mammon. It's what people do unrighteously with their money. Many people are taking their money to do unjust things. And God is not going to trust you because first of all, it's our father that gave us the seed. Not to go out there, go out there and corrupt the seed. I Amen. Praise God. And God, and it says, who, and then it says, who will commit to your trust the true riches? I mean, really, who's going to give you true riches if you're not, if you're doing unrighteous things with the money, with the seed, and you're devouring the seed? Who's going to trust you? Is God going to trust you? Is man going to trust you? No. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. And you, sir will teach us to be good stewards, God, that we shall bring forth our blessings, Father God. That's right. We're going to be good stewards. There's going to be healthy boundaries in our lives. We're going to have good stewardship in our lives so that we can bring forth blessings. Amen. And whatever, whatever you do, whatever I do, whatever we do, and we do it well, because of this, amen, we attract favor. We attract favor. The word of God says that when we have favor with God, Jehovah God, we have favor with man. Just because of our righteousness and being in right standing with our Father, God will give us that favor. He will surround us with the shield of favor. And men and women and children will see that favor because that favor represents our Heavenly Father. It represents His righteousness. Amen? Praise God. And we will never despite the little things that our Father asks us to do. Do not despise the little things that our Father is asking you and I to do. It's little, but don't despise it because what start because a seed starts out little, yeah. But when it, we start to nurture the seed and bring forth the, the water and put it in good ground, etc., it's going to bring forth a harvest. It's going to bring forth much. It's going to bring forth increase upon increase and abundance upon abundance. So, Father, we just thank you for today in the name of Jesus for this word. We just thank you, Father God, that the children of God will begin to elevate themselves. Amen. They will not be demoted in the mighty name of Jesus. That is you, sir, that draws all men unto you, Abba Father. Is you, sir, that sets one up and put one down, Father. Father God, it's you, sir, that says that we are the head and we're not the tail. We are above and we're not beneath. You, sir, say that we are the lender, we are not the borrowers. In the mighty name of Jesus, yea, God, it's you, sir, that say that we shall prosper. Whatever we put our hand to do, it will prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, yea, God, we thank you that lack will not be a priority in our lives, Father God. We will not walk in financial barrenness in the mighty name of Jesus, yea, God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're word said that we are to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us so father we seek you first father God we thank you that wealth is given to us father God it's you that give us wealth father God it's you that cause us to excel to accelerate to prosper it's you that keeps us in health God that our mind is in right standing with you our father because we put on the whole armor of God father we thank you for today Days prosperity. We thank you for the families, God. We thank you for families around the world today, God. We thank you, God, that you are protecting your harvest. You are protecting your seed. We thank you, God, that you are sending out laborers, God, to go and gather the harvest, Father God, to bring people to the place of salvation, God, so that they will recognize your sovereignty, Father God, that they will begin to confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, God, that they will believe that he is a true 
living God, that he is the son of God, that he came to represent you, Abba Father, not himself, Father God, that you so will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the authority that you have given us through your son, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for trusting us with your Holy Spirit. And we recognize and acknowledge the spirit of the Lord in our lives today. I recognize him and I acknowledge the spirit of the Lord in my life today. I thank you, Father, for this teaching. And I pray whoever listens will get their breakthrough. And they will remain whole and healed. And that if there's anyone out there, anyone among us, God, that has insufficiency. And it wasn't intentional, Father God. Lord, let us be that person, that laborer, that can help our sister and our bro our sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. Let us go out in the field and labor because the harvest is plenty. And I'm your host, Jacqueline King, Prophetic Utterance. God bless you. Bye-bye.